My name is Jonathan Bueno, and I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease when I was 14. Like most 14 year olds, I felt like I could do pretty much anything, and I was completely confident that I could stay in school while I was going through treatment. I didn't care about my hair falling out or any of that stuff. I just wanted to be around my friends and feel normal. Things didn't go quite according to plan though. Because of the treatment, my immune system was weak, so I got sick really easily, which meant going to my public high school was basically out of the question. I went to the Board of Education and asked for help. They gave me two tutors and I received two hours of schooling every day at home. It may sound like fun to miss class, <laughs> but figuring out how to get through school is just another one of the many issues we face as young adult survivors. My life has changed a lot. Um, I was going to school for um, four years, taking 13 hours a semester, working two jobs, hanging out with my friends, going to church, joining organizations, and now I don't do any of that. I haven't been in school for a year. Well, I missed almost all of my seventh grade year, much of my eighth grade year, and, and a lot of my ninth and tenth grade years. My treatment was only, um, it was three months on chemo every week, and then off for a month and then on for another month to do a bone marrow harvest. So I wasn't able to attend classes because I was so sick. I love to learn, I love school. And that's why if I knew I was feeling well, I would go to school. I had a little meeting with all my teachers like individually the first day of school. And I sort of went to them and I had a note from the doctor and I was like, listen, I've got cancer. I'm gonna be missing some school. You know, can you be flexible? Great, okay. And I can only imagine what they were thinking when this kid came up to them and said that. And I was just sort of, you know, I wasn't upset about it. I was just like, you know, this is what it is. Please be nice. I still was behind academically, but not as behind as I, I, I could have been given, you know, my treatment and, and, and my diagnosis. My teachers worked with me. My brother was at the same school that I was at. So if he needed to pick up my books or if he needed to pick up my assignments, he would bring that to the hospital. And then my dad, uh, whenever he was around, he would help tutor me if I needed it. And mostly it was just me teaching myself chemistry or, you know, math or whatever. My physical life changed a lot after I was diagnosed and all through treatment. Um, I wasn't allowed to go to school um, for a lot of my treatment, and so I was away from my friends. But more than that, it was, it was just about the movement of my body. I couldn't, I didn't physically have the strength to be able to walk down the hall to the bathroom by myself. To make it through the day was a good thing, you know, without having to rest. And they always said I could use my study hall to go take a nap and fighting that, never wanting to, never wanting to be different. Even though your focus might be on I want to I want to live, I don't want to die, this chemo makes me sick, really think about that you want to have, you want to keep, uh, you know, interacting with people your age, both people that are patients and people that aren't patients, people that don't have a life that's only cancer, and you really need to believe that you will have a life beyond cancer that won't be surrounded by doctors and or centered with, with you know, treatment once you're done with chemo. You really need to understand that, that uh, you need to maintain whatever social skills you had before you got into this um, because you will have a life well beyond this, and your life well beyond this is very important. <laughs> If you're dealing with a cancer diagnosis and you're still in school, be smart. Make your treatment the top priority. You can find ways to maintain your relationships without risking getting sick. If you're not at risk of getting sick, then stay in school as much as possible. Ask for a little extra time to get to class or even think about using a wheelchair. Whatever it takes, just feeling normal by being in school will make a big difference emotionally. Everybody I talked to during my treatment, from social workers to friends and family to the Board of Education, really went out of their way to help me out. Getting the support I needed with school was one less thing I had to worry about. The only way to get what you want is to ask. So speak up and be heard. If you are dealing with school-related issues, it is important that you talk to your doctor or contact these cancer-related organizations for more information.